I believe that learning about fitness should mean more than understanding the top 5 exercises you can do for great abs. Learning more about ourselves allows us to make smarter choices with regards to training and nutrition, and it may provide useful self-knowledge and insight. All type of knowledge ultimately means self-knowledge. And to really learn about yourself, you need to get down to the fundamentals. In this case, that means the genetic level. So DNA is the most efficient form of data storage known to man. A single gram is capable of storing 215 petabytes of information. That's 215 million gigabytes. There are about 3 billion units of information stored across the combined DNA sequence. And a gene is a stretch of DNA that encodes for a specific function or trait. And there are around 30,000 of these genes in the human genome. This information is separated into 46 chromosomes, located in turn inside the nuclei, centres of the cells. Chromosomes mostly exist in pairs, with one from each parent. There are 23 pairs, although the 23rd pair are the sex chromosomes, X and Y. While the chromosome pairs contain near identical sequences, they each include differences, alleles, inherited from the respective parent. Each strand of DNA is made up of nucleotides that sit like beads on a thread. Nucleotides are comprised of three components, a sugar molecule, a phosphate group, and a nitrogenous base. These are called nucleobases, or just bases. These bases come in four possible flavours, adenine, cytosine, guanine and thymine, A, C, G and T. These form base pairs with complementary bases on the other strand, which is what gives DNA its helical structure that we know and love. So the main job of DNA is to build proteins, in other words, to create the building blocks that form our tissues. To do this, DNA is transferred to messenger molecules, called mRNA, in a process known as transcription. In short, your DNA determines the amounts and the locations of different proteins within the body, determining how your cells behave and ultimately resulting in the individual differences, phenotypes, that make you, you. Because most of our genetic code is identical among all humans, we can focus only on those areas that show a significant amount of variation within the population. These changeable positions are called SNPs, single nucleotide polymorphisms. They're pronounced SNPs because someone was being cute, I guess? These are variations affecting only one nucleotide, meaning a cytosine might be replaced with a thymine, for example. A polymorphism is a variation that affects over 1% of the population. Because we have two pairs of each gene, we then have to look at the corresponding chromosome to see if the same variation exists there. Those that inherit two copies of the same base, i.e. GG, are described as being homozygous. Those with just one copy are heterozygous. In such cases, it will be the dominant gene that is expressed, or the genes will interact in some way. There are countless studies identifying specific SNPs and showing how they correlate with particular traits. An allele is a version of a gene that has a particular effect. You might have the brown eyes allele, for example, although it's not that simple in reality. Mutation. It is the key to our evolution. It has enabled us to evolve from a single-celled organism into the dominant species on the planet. Genetic mutations are different. A mutation is a change to the DNA sequence that is considered abnormal or extremely rare, a deviation from the norm. Beneficial mutations are rare by definition, as those changes that are successful are likely to make their way into the general population. The most famous mutation as it pertains to athletic performance affects the myostatin MSTN gene. Animals, and extremely rare humans even, with a premature stop codon, exhibit a myostatin deficiency. As myostatin is known to inhibit muscle growth, this can in turn lead to double muscling, which is as cool as it sounds. The result is superior muscle strength and size, along with increased running speed in whippet dogs. However, it might also be associated with an increased risk of tendon injuries. Most mutations are harmful, however, which is why we're actually more interested in these slightly less exotic polymorphisms. And in short, it means you're very unlikely to be an X-Man. Sorry. But this is where things get really interesting, because certain polymorphisms have been shown to correlate with different traits, and in particular, athletic and cognitive traits. This is not to say that someone with that gene is likely going to be a superathlete, however, nor does it mean that you can't become a superathlete without that gene. To say that a single gene, let alone a single nucleotide, can determine your performance in any given area is a drastic overreach. 
For example, you might have a tendency towards fast twitch muscle fibre, which is great, but if you produce low testosterone, or if you have unhelpful tendon insertions, or a tricky hip socket, or if you have issues with motor learning, any of those things might prevent you from being an effective weightlifter. The predictions themselves are based on just a handful of studies in most cases. Only a fraction of the 4 to 5 million SNPs in the human genome have been studied at all. All a report like this can say is, looking at the studies, there appears to be a correlation between genotype A and result B. And of course environment and training have huge roles to play in how genes are expressed, and what we actually experience. In fact, I've heard it said that the most gifted natural athletes sometimes lack sufficient drive, owing to the fact that everything has always come easy for them until they reach those really elite stages. And this is where a little self-knowledge can be extremely valuable. Because if you know which of your own polymorphisms are negatively affecting your performance, you can look into ways to mitigate them. With smart training, you could potentially outperform even the best of the best. So the question remains, which SNPs are known to predict superior athletic and cognitive performance? Here are just a few interesting ones. ACTN3 ACTN3 is perhaps the most talked about gene when it comes to athletic performance, especially as it relates to explosive strength. The ACTN3 gene, also called the SPEED gene, encodes the protein actinin alpha-3, which is a sarcomeric protein related to the formation of fast twitch muscle fibre, recovery and training adaptation. ACTN3 is expressed preferentially in the fastest type 2 X fibres. The ideal genotype, controlled by the polymorphism R577X RS1815739, can therefore allow an individual to build more explosive muscle more easily. Whereas conversely, roughly 18% of the population is completely deficient in actin in alpha 3. It is swings and roundabouts though, as these guys tend to perform better in endurance tasks. ACE. Another gene that gets a lot of attention is the angiotensin 1 converting enzyme gene, or ACE to its friends. ACE can encourage the formation of a vasoconstrictor, blood vessel narrowing agent, called ANG2, while also degrading the vasodilator, bradykinin. ANG2 is also a recognised growth factor in its own right and contributes to hypertrophy. The ACE gene insertion deletion polymorphism is associated with improved exercise performance and duration. In particular, the insertion allele has been shown to correlate with improved endurance related activity. The deletion allele, meanwhile, is related to improved strength and power based performance and is regularly found among elite level swimmers. This D allele is also related to greater heart response to training in the left ventricle. IL6 Interleukin-6 is a pleiotropic cytokine that also plays a role in fibrogenesis and the expression of vascular endothelial growth factor, or VEGF. IL-6 is produced by the muscles in response to exercise and aids in recovery, aiding in neutrophil mobilisation and promoting impaired insulin resistance. It's even referred to by some scientists as an exercise factor. What's really interesting is that IL-6 appears to be particularly useful when engaging in eccentric training. I listed a few more of these on my website, so if you'd like to see more potential polymorphisms that might affect your athletic performance, go and check those out. As well as increased speed, strength and stamina, winning the genetic lottery can also potentially gift an individual with improved cognition. For instance, the RS6265 polymorphism affects the BDNF gene. This is brain-derived neurotrophic factor, a chemical that promotes the growth of new neurons and synapses. The C allele of this particular SNP is linked with better NBAC scores and working memory, larger amounts of slow-wave sleep, which is possibly linked with greater neural plasticity, and possibly even higher mean intelligence. Genes influence personality in countless ways too. One of the most interesting genes in this regard is COMT, C -O -M -T, which is referred to as the warrior warrior gene. The SNP RFS4680 is linked to our ability to break down catecholamine neurotransmitters, such as norepinephrine, cortisol and dopamine. Thus, COMT activity can influence how quickly an individual is able to recover from stressful events. But of course, this is again contingent on the initial levels of those neurotransmitters among countless other factors, not to mention life experience. 
There have been several studies that link specific SNPs to overall success in education and career paths even. But I should take this opportunity to point out that this doesn't mean we should judge a person's potential success on their genetics, nor is any genotype objectively better than any other. The future's not set. There's no fear about what we make for ourselves. Apart from anything else, these findings are more reflective of the traits that society happens to value at any given time, rather than the innate gifts or shortcomings in the population. School systems in particular are notoriously bad at predicting future greatness. Examples are forthcoming of those that dropped out of school only to later be considered geniuses within their fields. Our measures of fluid intelligence are also far from perfect, and of course there are countless environmental factors that can predict overall success. In fact, it's our differences that really enable us to provide real value. My favourite blogs to read are the ones that have something unique and different to say, a different perspective. The best music is new and interesting music that you haven't heard before. And of course, lifestyle and training also play a huge role. Depending on your starting hand, you might just be able to train your way out of any perceived shortcomings. Gene expression is controlled by methylation, a process in which chemicals called methyl groups attach themselves to DNA and thus block specific portions from being active. Throughout your cells, different genes are expressed, resulting in the production of different proteins. This is how a muscle cell can behave differently from a brain cell for instance, despite containing the same DNA. If you imagine that DNA contains the alphabet, Methylation allows the body to spell out certain words by crossing out letters. This is epigenetics. What's cool about this is that training, diet and lifestyle factors all contribute to gene expression and methylation. The moment we begin working out, the activity of genes within muscle cells gets altered. Something similar occurs in the brain following a bout of learning. Diet is similarly impactful, as is everything from stress to sunlight to sleep, and much more. Interestingly, gene expression itself can also be increased or decreased through diet and other methods and may itself be more or less mutable depending on your initial genotype. And what's really cool is that epigenetic changes can actually stick around and even be passed on to offspring. Your training or lack thereof can therefore have a direct impact on the athleticism of your future children. Something to consider. So if anything, I hope that all of this just serves to show how truly complex we humans are. Every one of your traits is the result of countless contributing factors, both genetic and environmental. I've barely scratched the surface and there's so much here that we rarely hear in the conversation surrounding muscle building or athletic performance. We're so different that we should be very careful giving generalised advice to any person. A supplement or neurotropic that helps one person may be ineffective or even harmful for someone else. We also see why different people respond better or worse to particular types of training. The key is to keep looking until you find what works for you. I believe that we all have something unique to offer, and our success really comes down to our ability to express that uniqueness in a way that is genuine and that offers value. If you found all of this interesting and you'd like to learn more about your own DNA and how it might impact your performance, then I highly recommend checking out selfdecode.com. I've put a link to that in the description down below, and this isn't a sponsored post, but I will earn a little bit of commission if you follow that and decide to make a purchase. So that would support the site in a big way, and I'd be very grateful indeed. Essentially, Self Decode analyzes your DNA and then gives you extremely detailed reports, along with other stuff relating to your health, fitness, cognition, stress levels, and much more. You can even find out how susceptible you might be to COVID. They detail how everything works in a comprehensive manner, provide links to all the studies, and even provide actionable tips you can follow. If you do decide you want to give it a try, you can either order a testing kit which requires you to send back some saliva, or you can just upload a file you already have if you've done that before for sites like Ancestry. This is an exciting new frontier for fitness and coaching, but it needs to be used in the right way. Of course there are other sites that do similar things, so shop around as well if you like. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful and interesting, I got a bit technical on this one. If you did, please consider leaving a like and sharing it around, as that would help me out immensely. What do you think some of your own genetic strengths and weaknesses are, and how have you adapted your training in kind? If you like the idea of training in a way that develops every aspect of your fitness, including mobility, strength, speed, endurance, and even cognitive performance, then you could check out my ebook and training program, Super Functional Training. There's a link to that in the description down below as well, and there's a discount on whilst we're all in lockdown. 
hit subscribe if you want more like this and the bell button if you want to be notified of new uploads. I'll be uploading the Doom Slayer workout very soon, as that's by far my most requested video at the moment, so subscribe if you don't want to miss that one. And either way, thank you so much for watching this one, and for all your support, and bye for now!